Hello, welcome back. Today we're going to look at a property of waves called refraction. Now refraction occurs whenever a wave is traveling from one medium into a different medium and we know that when the wave changes mediums the velocity of the wave also changes. And we're going to look at two scenarios. Scenario one will be where the wave slows down which is the case that's presented already on the screen. Here we see a laser light traveling from air, which is a fast medium, into water, which is a slow medium. Notice we have control of the index of refraction. Now we haven't talked about the index of refraction per se yet, but it's labeled with the small n. And we say that the index of refraction for air is 1, and the index of refraction for water is 1.33. And what it is, is it's just a, a standardized number reference to the speed of light in a vacuum. So when you see the index of refraction is the number 1, what, mean, what that means is that the speed of light in this medium, in air in this case, is 1 times the speed of light in a vacuum. In other words, it's the same. Whereas water is 1.33, and what that means is the speed of light in water is 1.33 times slower. Or in other words, it's 1.33 times faster in air than it is in water. Now let's return to our simulation. We see a traditional view of our laser light here. Anybody that's seen a laser in the lab or a pen light or a pen laser knows that the beam comes out just as shown here. And it's usually red. I've seen blue ones and green ones. Red is the most common. So the red light comes down to this interface to this surface where the medium changes. And notice I've drawn a dotted line here. And this dotted line represents that imaginary line which is called the normal line. And all angles in optics and in waves have to be measured with respect to that normal line. So I would say that this little angle right in here is called my incident angle, my angle of arrival, my incident angle. And this little angle down below in the slow medium is called the angle of refraction. Now notice on the sim, it's very realistic. It also shows the wave partially reflecting off the surface, which is why it's a little bit dimmer. Not all of the wave reflects like a mirror, but some of it reflects, some of it refracts. And the way it's drawn here is that we have more refracting than is reflecting. And notice the reflected wave just adheres to our normal rules where the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. That's very simple. But we're changing mediums now, so the angle actually changes. Now this viewpoint, will be more useful when we start to look at optics itself. What we want to do is look at what happens to the actual waves. So we're going to put the laser into wave view. Now this is not something you'd see in the real world, but what it's going to do is break down the wave into its individual wave crests and we're going to see what happens when it strikes the medium. So what I'll do first of all is start the wave straight on. And notice when our laser is straight on there is no bending, it just goes straight into the water. But when we look at it from a wavelength point of view, see the little crest moving from top to bottom? Notice that when it crosses the boundary, everything slows down so the waves squeeze together. So the first thing that happens when waves slow down is that the wavelength gets smaller. Now what about when they're at an angle? Well we can see when we've got a slight angle here with respect to the normal, right? Remember what I said before, if I go back to ray view, this is my angle of incidence, this is my angle of refraction. And we can see that there's a slight difference between those two. And I don't know if you can tell just yet, but it's actually bent a little bit towards the normal. In other words, the angle of refraction is a little bit smaller than the angle of incidence. Let's go back to our wave view. So not only has the wavelength gotten smaller, it's changed directions and bent towards the normal. And it turns out that the bigger the angle of incidence, the greater the bending that occurs, the, the greater the deviation between those angle of incidence and angle of refraction is going to be. It's going to be a larger difference between the angle of incidence and angle of refraction. Keep that in mind later when we start talking about optics and, and as to why we use lenses that are shaped the way they are. We're trying to force a larger angle of incidence so that we get more refraction, a bigger bend. So if we were to summarize, first of all, the frequency doesn't change. And you can actually see that. If you could actually count the number of waves arriving per second at this boundary, it's going to be identical to the number of waves leaving the boundary. If 10 waves hit the boundary per second, then 10 waves have to leave the boundary per second because the waves that are hitting the boundary are creating the ones below. So to summarize, as it slows down, the wavelength gets smaller. The wave bends towards the normal. 
but the frequency remains constant. Now let's look at the reverse scenario where we go from slow to fast. So I'm going to change my medium now. So first of all, I'll go back to laser view, put it straight on once again, and again, let's not worry too much about the index of refraction, but I want the wave to slow down now, so I'm going to start this thing in water. I'm going to do the reverse and go into air. So it's starting in the slow medium. It's going to speed up when it crosses the boundary into air. So when I move this thing, first of all, you might notice that the wave is actually bending away from the normal. Let's bring it down far enough so we can actually see. So here's our incoming wave. Here's our incident angle. And there's our outgoing or refracted wave as it crosses the boundary. And this is my refracted angle. The refracted angle is bigger than the angle of incidence. We can see that the line itself is going away from the normal. It's deviated away from the normal. So if we look at it from a wave point of view, the angle of incidence is smaller than the angle of refraction, or we say that the wave bends away from the normal. Notice what happens to the wavelength. Because it's speeding up, the waves are racing ahead, the wavelength gets longer, and you get that same effect, that the harsher this angle is, the more the bending is. Now one thing you will observe when you go from slow to fast that you won't observe the other way is something called the critical angle. And what happens is once you get to a certain spot, notice here's my reflected wave, here's my refracted wave. Notice the size of the refracted wave as I get bigger and bigger. It gets smaller and smaller until it becomes invisible. It no longer exists and this wave is entirely reflected off the surface. The point at which that occurs, the angle of incidence at which that occurs, is called the critical angle and it only occurs when you go from slow to fast and that's because as you can see from the diagram the largest possible angle of refraction is going to be 90 degrees and once I get my angle of incidence so that my refracted angle is exactly 90 degrees I've reached what's called the critical angle so wave will no longer refract it'll just reflect and if I'm bigger than the critical angle it just reflects if I'm smaller we get some refraction and some reflection